Welcome to Green River College's GatorCast. This is Green River College's podcast series. This is Suzanne Johnson talking to you today. I'm president at Green River College. Today, we have with us Kathy Alston. And Kathy, what is your position here at Green River College? Well, first, Dr. Johnson, thank you so much for asking me to be a part of this. Uh, I currently am the director of workforce education here at Green River College. All right. Now, one of the things that students have asked me about, especially students who are returning, they're older students, they're not necessarily a running start student, they're right out of high school. And they've had all kinds of interesting challenges in their life. They're at different points in their life. And I've happened upon them in some of my Pizza with the President events and other times just walking around campus. And I find that they have a lot of questions about how they can stay in school um, even though they've got children, some child care issues, they've got employment issues. Um, and I know I have directed those students your, in your direction. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about workforce education, because that is the office that you lead here at this college. It's located on the second floor of Cedar Hall. You have a large and just lovely welcoming staff of people there. Let's, just, let's talk a little bit about workforce education. What is that? Absolutely. You give me an opportunity to talk about one of the uh, my most favorite things, and that is, you know, workforce education, then, of course, an opportunity to really brag about my staff and what a wonderful um, group of individuals that they are and committed to working with students. Workforce education, it's a big term. What does it mean? Right. So basically, it it's a program that has been developed to assist uh, a population of student that you started out your question by describing. They're not necessarily right out of high school. They are, maybe they have families and they're um, in between jobs or maybe unemployed and are working with different barriers in their life. So they don't necessarily fit into that going to college mold, which we um, call the non-traditional student. And those students, their um, desire for education is no less than those that are coming straight out of high school, but they do have significant challenges maybe that they have to overcome. So, so workforce. Let's talk about some of those challenges. Oh, okay. All right. So some of those challenges might be, for instance, you alluded to it, they may have families. Um, families with maybe one or two children, a spouse, and maybe they're working while they're um, negotiating those life um, events. And so going back to school, adds on to an additional layer of responsibility. And so they have to try to figure out how they can balance still all those roles, the role of an employer, the role of a husband, the role of, of, a, of a, a parent or um, a, a spouse, um, a life partner. They have to figure out how they're going to balance all of those things out while also um, trying to reach for their goal, which, you know, could be a degree or a certificate. Are they facing a lot of financial challenges? Do they have um, challenges in the context of housing, food security? Absolutely. So the population that I just described, that's only one. But all of them, depending on, you know, whether or not they're they're um, married or single, they may have economic challenges. They may be unemployed, underemployed. They may have challenges with food insecurities. Um, It's hard to be able to figure out where that next meal is coming from if you really don't know where that next paycheck is coming from. And then added on to that, there's also the issue of housing. And maybe they're in between housing. They could be couch surfing, um, which all qualifies as different levels of homelessness. And so they're working with those types of barriers. Uh, Those only um, are a few of the barriers that they're dealing with, but their desire for education is... um, is just as strong. So we try to figure out at Workforce Education how we can help those students achieve their goals while overcoming and helping to navigate through some of those life challenges. This is really important and for our listeners out there. And I know we have listeners, not just who are students at Green River right now that are, say, 18, 19, 22, 23. We have listeners from our community area 
Green River College is a college for anyone who wants to seek a better future for themselves. And many of the students that come to Green River are non-traditional. They are adult students well over the age of 25, 30, 35. Keep going. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Uh We have students of all ages. And for those listeners out there that are struggling with uh, homelessness, housing stability, food security, there are resources and assistance available to you while you pursue education. And Kathy's office, Workforce Education, is a primary stop for you to go to, reach out to. And while we're at this moment, because we're going to continue talking about workforce education, Cedar Hall, second floor, what's the office number, Kathy? So actually the office... Cedar Hall is kind of a wonky building. When you walk in, you think that you're on the first floor, but it's actually, that's the second floor. So Cedar, so our office is um, one level up, which would actually be the, the third floor. Level. Right, it's okay. on the 300 level. So our office number is 303. And then how do people reach you? If they can't come in person initially, how can they reach you? Phone number, email, so, so we have, um, of course, our office number, which is 253-833-9111, extension 2211. 2211. Which would, of course, then we check that um, several times throughout the day. You can leave a message and someone will get back to you within that 24-hour period. We also have our workforce email address, which is workforce at greenriver.edu. And that um, comes right into our inboxes. And again, that is checked daily. And um, one of my coordinators, someone will get back to you within uh, the 24 hours. Excellent. So thank you for that little sidebar there in terms of contact (laughs) information. So it sounds to me like many of our students have varying challenges and issues that sometimes can get in the way of pursuing a degree or certificate. Yes. Mm -hmm. And your offices are there to assist. What are the most common challenges you see in your office? Oh, my goodness. We have such a wide range. But one of the most common that we have is for someone who had been working at a job and that through no fault of their own, they find themselves without employment. So they may be collecting unemployment and they realize that in order to be able to get back into the workforce, say they've had this job for many years. And so now they find themselves that they have to get back into the workforce and they either need to update their skills or perhaps they need that certificate or degree in order to regain entrance into the workforce. Perhaps at the time when they became employed, they didn't need to have that credential. But times have changed significantly and we find where having that um Certificate or degree is extremely important in order to be able to compete in today's workforce. So now they've come in and they need assistance in trying to gain either um, added skills, tools to add to their toolkit, or perhaps they need a degree or in a new field. Uh, So many times we find that individual who has maybe even worked on that job for 10, 15 Um, 20 years and they thought that they were going to get the gold watch but instead they ended up getting a pink slip and they're having to start all over again so if you could imagine just put yourself in that individual's shoes they've been working life has been going along smoothly they're now looking at the next phase of their life and now they find out that everything has come crashing down and they have to start all over again, essentially. So besides just the um, the financial struggle of now trying to obtain a higher education or a certificate, they also now have all those psychological issues that are going on. There's a large fear factor, a fear of the unknown. How did I get in this place? They feel like they've let people down. 
So in our office, we find that we are not just a funding source, and I know we'll get to what workforce can do, but we find ourselves more as a triage where we are dealing with and helping those individuals sort through all of those other issues. So it's more than just the educational piece. Sometimes it's also that psychological piece from a very humanistic standpoint and trying to put that individual back together again. So that's just one example. Of course, we have many others. We have people that are on utilizing food benefits, or we have people that want to go back to school, but they have child care issues. How can I go back to school? And then I have toddlers at home. How do I navigate that? And I don't have the resources to help pay for that. So you, your office handles all of these kinds of situations. Absolutely. And if, for whatever reason, it is something that... Um, a resource that we don't have readily available through our grants. The beauty about WorkSource is that we have connections within the Auburn community, and we refer to those as our community partners. And we have a deep relationship with them. And so if there's a resource that we're not able to provide a student or a potential student, we know where we can find the resource. And so it's a warm handoff. Right. So this could be, you know, um, uh, availability of child care. This could be helping them access um, social services supports that they might need, um, unemployment needs that they might have. Housing. Housing. housing we have helped several students obtain temporary housing through some of our community partners. Right. Um, we had a student, just to give you an example, who was um, had two children, both um, under uh, preschool age, and she was essentially homeless, living in a garage. And she was our student that needed to that wanted to come back to school. And so, before we could address her educational needs, we first had to address, you know, her. Um, her, her immediate needs of having a warm and dry place to sleep and a safe place for her children. And so before taking care of classes, tuition, and all those steps that you may have to do in order to get yourself started on your pathway for school, we first had to address getting her um, uh, adequate housing and making sure she was able to um, feed her family, so enrolling her in uh, food stamps, and then taking care of the child care issue. All of that had to be done before we can start looking at the educational piece. So I think as, as our listeners are, are hearing all of what happens within our Workforce Education Office, um, some might be surprised in terms of the kinds of work that you and your staff engage in to help remove barriers so that those who, who are seeking education can actually achieve it and succeed in it. And that's what's so very important about this whole area of our college called workforce education. Mm -hmm. um, it's an office that's helping assist students, yes, uh, adults, returning adults, first time to college adults um, in their pursuit of education but by assisting them in other aspects of their life so they can have the time and space and the financial support to be in the classroom. Very well put. Very uh, well okay, put. Okay, well, th thanks for that. <laughs> thanks for that. So we have a sense of what workforce education is. So uh -huh. how can workforce education help a listener out there right now? I know we've touched on some examples, but if, if, if we have a listener out there saying, gee, I wonder if this, if I fit, um, how do I know if I qualify to come into workforce education or, you know, what can they do for me? What are, what are we going to say to our listeners there? So one of the things that I would say is that um, we're there to help you navigate through that. Uh, so I can provide you with links on our website that you would be able to go to, to be able to take a quick survey to see if you're eligible. But I know that that is not always a resource that's available to um, 
some of our some of our population. So I always like to say, come on in or give us a call if coming in is um, can be a challenge. Then uh, give us a call, and we can do some pre screening over the phone to see if it's something that you might be eligible for. And the eligibility can be a little tricky because under workforce education, we have four grants. And under each one of the four grants have different eligibility criteria. Right. And what we're talking about when we talk about eligibility is if you fit criteria um, for workforce education, you're essentially eligible for financial support to be able to pursue um, an educational degree here or Cor certificate. Correct. And that financial support could be in the terms of look like uh, tuition, fees, assistance with purchasing books. If you're in a, a program that requires specialized tools, what I mean by that, say, for instance, you are um, taking our automotive technology or maybe you're um, always wanted to be a welder. And so those come with specialized tools. And so the under some of those grants, if you're eligible, aside from being able to assist you with tuition and fees and books, um, you would also need to be able to purchase those tools in order to be able to right. perform at your program. So the grants can do that as well. And that's terrific. So there's four different sources of revenue that you have available to you. And each of those sources of grant monies have different eligibility requirements. And so how to find out whether you're eligible for one of those where you can get financial assistance to pursue a degree or certificate would mean that you would reach out to workforce education. Because one of the questions that any student has, whether they're workforce education eligible students or not, is how do I, for, how do I afford college? Can I really afford college? How do I pay for college? And so on our homepage, there is a clickable link called pay for college exactly and workforce is one of those links under that tab exactly and there is a very quick if you follow those links there's a very quick um, survey and um, it says um, workforce survey and it's um, a easy survey to take there are yes or no answers it's very fast and at the end of the survey you will know whether or not you are eligible for one or more than one of our grants. But in addition to that, after you've taken the survey, it will invite you to attend one of our orientations that we give weekly, Tuesday at 1 o'clock in Cedar Hall. And like I said, it's weekly, and it is our um, go-to-college-free orientation. And in that orientation, we go over all four of the grants, how it works, how you can get started at Green River. But wait, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> there's more. Listeners. There's more. At the end of um, our presentation, which is only maybe about 20, 25 minutes, you will have an opportunity to meet one-on-one -on -one with one of our uh, workforce coordinators. And we'll take you into an office. It's uh, Everything is confidential. And you will be able to, you will um, be given an intake, a short intake. And we would be able to determine which grants you're eligible for. So the beauty about it is that once you walk away, you know whether or not you have funding to assist you with college. It's not one of those deals where we say, okay, we'll be in touch. You will know by the time you leave that office whether or not you have funding in order to go to college. So for our listeners out there, whether it's for you or someone that you know who has been struggling in their current circumstances, um, education is a pathway to a better life and a better living condition. We're going to be posting some additional resources with this podcast episode. The title of the episode is Workforce Education. And as a reminder, You'll be able to find those resources on our website connected to our 
uh, podcast. If you go to greenriver.edu forward slash GatorCast and click on the episode Workforce Education, you will find additional resources that Kathy's sharing with you right now, a reminder of these weekly workshops, um, where to find the workforce survey, and additional information that will be useful to you, ways to get to the college, and how to find that office. So don't forget that. So let's circle back to the kinds of stories that that you see in the office every day. And if we've got a listener out there, whether it's themselves or someone they know, are there students that, are there Green River students or future Green River students that come in and they say to you, I don't know why I'm here, I don't think I can do this, why would I be a college student? How can I fit in? Do you ever hear those kinds of questions? Absolutely. I mean, that is the predominance of really what we see. Because when you stop and think about most of the students or potential students that walk through our doors, they have already been hit with so many of life's struggles and difficulties that they question. They question whether or not um, they're able to do this. They question whether or not they belong. Some of our students, they're the first ones in their family ever to go to college. We call those first generation. They have no idea what to expect, whether it's something that they're even capable of doing. And so what we do is that we even what should I be doing? They don't know. And if there is um, one of the things that I would really like for the listeners to take away from this is that workforce, the Department of Workforce Education, while it is financial assistance and financial aid, it's more than that. It's really a place where we help students navigate how to be successful and how to get started on this journey. And part of getting started is trying to figure out what am I even going to do? So when you sit down and you meet with our workforce um, coordinators, we can start at the very beginning with you. We can go back to tell us what you like. Tell us what it is you've always dreamt about doing. If the if I like to say if this was the land of Walgreens and it was the perfect land, what would you be doing? And so we take it all the way f- as far back as that. And then after we do some job searching with them, we will even refer them to our career center here on campus. I know Josh. Yes. The theory. He's he our is they, they are absolutely wonderful in that office and they have um, different mechanisms, different methods in which they would be able to sit down and help a student try to figure out or get a better idea of what it is that they could see themselves doing. Right. And for all of our listeners, uh, go to the podcast on career exploration where I interviewed Josh Steffieri and he can tell you more about those resources and how to access them. See, so you see, we are all here working together for you. It's a collaborative effort. It's a team effort. And so we depend on other departments on Green River to be able to assist our students. And then in working together, we're able to come up with a plan to um, get a student started to include the advising piece. And so you have a whole team of people working with you to help you navigate and figure out this journey and also to encourage you and show you that, yes, you can do this, but you're not alone in it. You have a whole team of people at Green River that care about your success. And that's why we're here every day that's what gets us to work every day is we're working for you. You know, your your comments are making me realize, you know, every every person who comes into your office has a unique story. Each one of us who works at Green River has a unique story. But for those who come through your doors, Kathy, and for those who come to Green River College, although they have different life stories, different challenges, Um, different sorts of doubts or insecurities or fears, anxieties, whatever it might be, I bet they have one thing in common. And I think it might be hope for a better tomorrow. Absolutely. 
You just gave me goosebumps when you said that. It's so true. It really is. And your office is one of a number of offices on our campus that can provide the path for the better tomorrows. So for the listeners out there that don't think they can do college, they don't think that they can afford college, they don't think they can juggle those things that are in their lives right now and to get additional education to improve your economic conditions and your living arrangements, this is uh, an episode to tell you, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And one of the ways in which you can do that is to reach out to Kathy Alston at our Workforce Education Office. So I have another question for you, Kathy, and I've been doing yes. this with every every guest we have at our Gator Cast. Okay. <laughs> I have asked each of the uh, the guests to tell tell the audience, tell me a little bit more about yourself. How did you get to Green River? What's your life story? What a journey! My life story. I won't go too too far back, but you can go as far <laughs> back as you'd like. Um, I am uh, the spouse of a retiree. Uh, from uh, the military, uh, branch of service, the Army. And so we've had an opportunity to move all over. And in our movings, I've always been very um, active in assisting service members or their spouses because the military lifestyle it can be very challenging. And And we have a lot of military in our service area. Yes, so it can be extremely challenging. So I've always been in the um, helping business. What led me into higher education was I always had a deep, deep passion for education, for learning. And I didn't realize how really deep-rooted it went until I was a um, transitions counselor for active duty service members that were getting ready to transition out of the military here at JBLM. What Helping I them get transitioned back into civilian back into life. civilian life, and some have what they've been in the military for a short amount of time, a year or two, to those that had been like my husband who had been in the military twenty four years, and for some that was pretty much all that they knew. That was the life that they led, and so some branches are a little bit better than others in having. Um, Uh, jobs in the military that translate pretty cleanly into the civilian sector. But the Army, theirs was a little bit more challenging, especially those that were were in the infantry or some of those other combat-ready MOSs. And so what I realized as I was working with um, these individuals was that many of them wanted to do great things when they came out, but maybe did not necessarily have the the cross training to be able to jump right in or they did not have the credential, whereas the military trained them on the civilian sector. They didn't have that that credential, that counterpart that said, yes, I know how to do what I say that I can do. So almost all of them I found in my counseling really needed to go back to school and that education was really going to be the pathway and the key to their success. Listen out there, all you veterans. And it was just like, you have got to start planning this early. Your transition and education plays a part in it. And at that point in time, someone had reached out to me about trying to stand up a veteran center out of college. And I found out that that was a great way for me to take my two great passions of education and then also working with service members and bring those two together. So I left my position at um, JBLM and went to work at a college. And um, I enjoyed that college experience so much that I decided I loved it and I couldn't see myself working anywhere else. So this took me to um, Kentucky, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, where I stood up a veteran center. And then I came back to Washington and I worked as a um, veteran certifying official at South Puget Sound Community College. Sure. A nearby, uh, you know, collaborative. Collaborator, part of our um, 34 system, 34 college system. And in that, my desire to to continue to help and to... um, 
move people from where they currently are to a better place, it continued to grow, but I was only working with that very small population of veterans and their families, and I wanted to be able to do more. And so I moved out of um, being a veteran certifying official to a general academic advisor, which then led me into transition uh, workforce transitions advisor, where I assisted those at workforce um, students in trying to help them to navigate, plan out their courses and also fund them through what's called the worker retraining program which is an element of which what is you an do element now of what of i do now education. exactly and so i just fell in love with the idea of being able to help individuals that have just as much talent and desire and skill but are dealing with barriers that makes them self doubt whether or not their purpose and what they can accomplish and I just love being able to help move people through that process and to motivate and to show, yes, you can do it. And which has led me now to Green River in a different role as a director, which then allows me a bit more creativity and the ability to not just work with one of these grants, but all four and to reach a broader base of, of people. Sure. And I bet you get such a wide range of students uh, or prospective students coming into to the office. Do you have veterans uh, coming through workforce education? We do. We do have veterans that come through. And for those veterans that are out there listening, and you might say, oh, well, I have my GI Bill. Why do I need workforce education? Well, workforce education is a good um, resource to kind of keep in your back pocket when your book stipend, for whatever reason, um, runs out because you'll have a book stipend. That book stipend is $1,000 for your academic school year. It'll run out throughout the year and you're going to still need books. And so being a part of the workforce um, family, we're able to assist you with some of those books as well as your, um, your post 9-11 GI Bill does not pay for specialized tools that you might need for a specific program. So we're able to assist you with that as well. And since we're talking um, specifically to our veterans or those who know veterans who are not in the education pipeline but could benefit from doing that, as you know at Green River, or you might not know, we have a stand-up uh, Veterans Resource Center here at Green River College located on the second floor of our Student Affairs building um, as a as a standalone resource center for vets, um, but we also have our workforce education that complements that as well. And thank you for bringing that up. So, so you've come back here to Washington. Now you're in the workforce development uh, and education area. And what do you find to be the most rewarding or impactful aspect of your job each day? When a student comes in... So originally, I was going to say graduation, right? I love that time of year. But when you said each day, every day we get a student that walks in through the door, that comes to see a coordinator, that wants to thank them because they got through a particular class that they didn't think that they could get through. Or they are just amazed at the fact that I can't believe I'm in college. I never thought I would go to college. And I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And they're so excited about the prospect of what could be. And that it just warms you to know that you're a part of that. And they're not across the finish line yet. But that's okay because they're in the game. And as long as you're in the game, then you always have the opportunity to go across the finish line. But you have to be in it. And they're doing it. And even though they may have a setback, they still come back and they are persistent. And they have, they have their eye on the prize. And you know that in some small part of their success, you have a little thumbprint on that. And that's exciting. 
It is exciting, and it's it's such a reflection of why Green River College is here in the first place. For our listeners out there, Green River College is your college. It is your college that serves this community, um, small and large. This is an institution that is here for anyone who wishes to explore and learn new things and move to a different point in their life. Kathy, thank you so much for being here today. You have been listening to our GatorCast, greenriver.edu forward slash GatorCast. If you go to the website, please subscribe. And you will also find additional resources that we'll have posted next to this episode called Workforce Education for all of you to find additional uh, information and follow up. If you're out there doubting yourself, questioning whether you can do it, we are the first two to say, yes, you can. Why wait to believe in yourself? Have a great day. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Thank you.